shrunk or treat, I saw all kinds of creatures, kids and some grown-ups dressed up in masks and costumes, you know, Harry Potter, Belle, a scary clown, which I thought looked a lot like the boy's mother, <laughs> and more, right? Here are four other possibilities. Our Lego ninja friend, a good guy, Yay. a stormtrooper from Star Wars, a bad guy, boo, <laughs> a cardinal, Yay! And a card, no. Boo! <laughs> anyway. I'll bet for Halloween there'll be plenty of folks wearing Halloween masks and costumes this year. And if we took off those masks, what would we see? What's underneath? And what do today's scriptures say to all of that? The clear and undeniable message of our scriptures today is that we are to love God and love one another as we love ourselves. That's it. In fact, our scriptures tell us that there is nothing more important than that, nothing, that when we take off our masks, what others are to see is people who love God and love one another. These days, I'm not seeing that quite as much as I wish. What I see underneath our scary masks is often still kind of scary. There are, as many of you know personally, a lot of families who have members who are not even talking to one another because they're mad about their opinions on politics, about wearing masks, about vaccinations. My priest friends in the city are particularly struggling right now with how the effects of economic injustice and racism fuel violence and despair. The pastors of the Churches in Eureka had a, held a Zoom prayer meeting recently, where, which included leaders from the Rockwood School District. The racism that has reared its ugly head and the venom and vitriol around the question of wearing masks were discouraging to each of us at that meeting. And for some reason, more people than I've ever seen before seem to feel free to be mad and yell and be mean. And then we get this scripture that there is nothing more important than that we love God and each other. My friends, that is who we really are. Deep down, that is our true self. There is a place in us where we are one with God and one with one another. A place in us that really yearns to know this unity, that yearns for justice for all and compassion for all. It's in us. Then why don't we see that so readily when we take off the mask? I think we have to go deeper. For too long and in too many ways, we've been layering ourselves with fear, hiding behind divisive rhetoric, putting on anger instead of kindness. And that's what a lot of people are seeing these days. Now, please don't hear me say that I don't also see so much goodness because I do. More than anything, I believe in and trust the goodness in the, that God put in the heart of each person, 
in, in so many ways, I am blessed to see that goodness shine forth for this world. But these days, I've been more discouraged than I've been for a long time by the amount of anger and mean-spiritedness that I've been seeing. Today's scriptures happily also offer a way out, a way forward. That sentence that says we are to love God and to love one another, it begins with, hear, O Israel. That's it. First, we have to read, learn, to hear. Not to listen to the voices that divide. You know, we've just got to stop listening to those. Those news channels, podcasts, and group texts that make our blood boil. Sites filled with, what's wrong with those people? What's wrong with those world? Turn them off. Stop listening. I've heard a lot of deeply spiritual people say these past months that they have needed to do that so that they could keep their heads glued on, their souls at peace. Oh, yes, we keep ourselves informed, but we do need to forsake those channels that seek to divide us, frighten us, and feed the worst in us. And we probably need to follow and listen to a lot less news in general. Instead, please, more and more listen to the goodness in you. To that voice in you that knows a better way. It is in you. The very voice of God is in you. It is. You've heard it. And what helps you hear that? How do we get better at hearing the voice of God? Who is the best in us? And who calls out the best in us? You know, as I said, first we, we turn off some stuff, right? Then in its place, maybe we spend a bit more time in nature. Take a few moments with the upcoming Sunday scriptures. Hang around with people who are kind. Listen to some podcasts on how to be healthy and loving. Do something practical that we are good at for another person. Practice looking for things for which to be grateful. May God help us learn to more and more get back in touch with who we really are, the best in us, the goodness deep in us. Yep. At Halloween, there are you know, plenty of people be wearing costumes and masks. And may they be for us a reminder of the masks we each wear. What lies below them and our call to learn to listen more and more to the simple goodness, the profound goodness that is deep within each of us.